Make sure your homework's in the middle. Make sure when you're done, you put the do now in the middle. Could have raised your hand and asked to do that. You didn't have to talk out of turn like that. you're doing now is in the middle you got your notebook open you got the I can statement for today written on top if I can see everyone's telling me what you're doing early Bring it back there and study the arms in the back. I would sneak it watch. I would sneak watch it every night. Every Saturday night. Well, it came out under the I uh I don't really watch it that much, but I do read the manga though. For today, there will be three examples. Make sure that you're ready for that. Today's lesson we will talk about in two minutes. It looks like almost everyone's done. Just waiting on a couple more people. Looks like everyone's done. So, mm -hmm. um, just gonna let you guys know ahead of time. Last class didn't go super well. A lot of it was my fault because I forgot to watch today, so I have no idea what time it is. That sent me off. And then Lawrence's joke this morning was just so funny. It really messed up my entire day. I can't stop thinking about it. Hang on, tissues right there. But you should have on the top. You should have lesson seventy-two. You should have the I can statement, I can apply implied ratios. Say that with me. I can apply implied ratios. That's like saying I have this many gym shoes in my closet for this many feet. I mean more like say dress shoes can I fit in my closet. Or you have one burger, you eat one burger in one minute. 
how long will it take you to eat five burgers? Stuff like that. That's what we're going to be talking about today. Make sure you're paying attention. Make sure you're following along. Your exit ticket has three questions, but they can get extremely hard if you don't take it step by step by step. Make sure you get this all in your notes. We got example one. <clears throat> uh, Perez, can you read that for me? If five pencils cost one one dollar and twenty cents, how much would twelve pencils cost? We need the ratio box to solve this problem. The problem. Right. So if you see in your homework, if you see on your exit ticket, it says use a ratio box. You're gonna have to draw a ratio box. Now you're wondering, what does a ratio box look like? Well, this is what one looks like. Please copy down the ratio box that you see on the slides. You see that there's a case one and a case two. The first case, pencils to dollars, is that five pencils cost 1.2 or $1.20. In case two, you see that we know how many pencils there are, but we don't know how many dollars it will cost. So what we're going to be doing today is finding that missing number. If you happen to miss it, if I happen to go too fast and you can't copy it down fast enough, just know this is straight from your book, so I expect you in study hall to copy it down if you happen to miss it. So now I'm going to have you copy things step by step because this is really, really important. Once underneath that Underneath the proportion box or the ratio box, you need to write down a proportion. I want you to write down the equation right here and the word proportion because this is step two. First thing you do is you make that box because that box tells you all the information you need. Doesn't matter. I'm going to go back real quick. It doesn't matter if you put dollars or pencils on top. It does not matter. You can put dollars on top, pencils on the bottom. You put pencils on top, dollars on the bottom. The only thing that has to happen is that in this box, you got to have the pencils on the same row and the money on the same row. Otherwise, this does not work. So the most important thing is to make sure that pencils are lined up and dollars are lined up. So you set up that proportion. And when you have proportions, you want to make sure you find that uh, that little missing letter. In order to do that, the first step you're going to do is cross multiply. So you're going to get 5D, because you don't know what D is, so you can't multiply it, equals 12 times 1.2. Make sure you get the words as well, because you need to know what you're doing, why you're doing it. Next step will be what? You have the box is one, proportions is two, cross multiply is three. Now we're on to step four, which is divide. Because we gotta get D by itself. In order to get D by itself, you gotta divide by whatever number is next to D, because then you get one over one. One over one simplified is just one. So that means you just got D left over. And then you got 12 over 1.2 divided by 5. The book doesn't tell you what 12 times 1.2 is. But what would it be? Start off with Tyler. Uh, is it 1.2? Five no, the one point two is how much? Yeah, it's one. It's how much five pencils cost? Yes, but you have to multiply that by the twelve pencils. How much would that be, Perez? Would you the, uh, uh, oh, I know. It. This is Mm, not quite. Ethan? 14.4. Yep, 14.4. 
Now you got to take 14.4 divided by 5. What do you get? Tyler? This is why you got to do stuff on paper. Perez? Karma? No, close. Very close. Karma? Nope. It's 2.88. There you go, 2.88. So $2.88 would cost, that's how much 12 pencils would cost. So step one, set up the ratio box. Step two, not pick on your fingernails. Step two, you set up your proportion. Step three, you cross multiply. Step four, you divide. And then you simplify. Any questions on that? You take it step by step, you can't get it wrong. Perez? Uh, nope. I think on your exit ticket, there will be no points on it. So, just depends on what it comes out to. Tyler? If you just divide 1.2 by 5 and then multiply it by 12, you get 1.2. Sure, but then you don't have the whole thing of cross multiply and divide, which is the whole point of lesson. All right, let's go on to number example number two. Miss Campbell can tie 25 bows in three minutes. At that rate, how many bows can she tie in one hour? What's the first thing you need to do? Josiah? Put it in protein. Sorry, what? Put it in protein. That's step two. William? Uh, yes, you got to make a ratio box. Jawan, sit up. So we got case one, case two. I'm going to go bows over minutes. How many bows do we have in total for the first case? Here, Alex. Okay. Yeah. And how many minutes did it take for her to tie those 25 bows, Mackenzie? Yeah. Okay. Do we know how many bows we can make in one hour? No. So that's what we're looking for. We're going to use lowercase b. How many minutes are we working with? Because we only have one hour. But we can't put one hour in here because we're dealing with minutes. So how many minutes are we dealing with? Kyle? 60 minutes. Now, Josiah, what do you do now? Um, put it in front of Sorry, what? Put it in front of Proportional. Proportional. Right. Because it's like this many to that many, this to that. They're the same but not really the same. So you're going to have to put... 25, I like to keep them just like they are, over 3 equals B over 60. So you set up your proportion. So we got step 1, step 2, what's step 3? Lanesha? You cross multiply. Cross multiply. Oh, no. Cross multiply, which gets you 3B equals, anyone know what 25 times 60 is? Take a couple seconds, write it down, don't guess. 25 times 60. Josiah? Not quite. Kyla? Carry on. 1,500. 1,500. All right. Next step. We just cross multiply. Now you got to, Jawan, you got to divide. So 3 divided by uh, 3 is now just B by itself. 
which now gives you number three. Wait. What's 1500 divided by three? Someone guessed it earlier. Okay, really? Like? Maybe 500. That one is loose. 500 bows. So you get 500 bows in one hour. Any questions how we solve that? Step by step by step. Perez. Uh, so, can you make it difficult? No. Because if you did that, then you would take 3 times 60, which would give you a different number. Or you would take, so you can't flip these. You just got to write them as they are. So whatever you write in this box, set up your proportion just like that. Multiply, cross multiply, then divide. Malik? So you do cross multiply in a box. Yeah, you could say that, but the thing is, Malik, so this is like whoever who's ever used Legos before. All right. I used to love Legos. When I have Lego, I would take out the book and I would take all the pieces out and I would separate all the pieces so that I know which part would go with which. So Malik, that's like, this is you separating the pieces so you can see what you need. Now, this is like the instruction manual telling you what to do. This is you putting together, then you dividing, get to your answer, your final product, okay? So the box, the ratio box, is what you need. Create your proportions just like the box is. So 25 over three, B over 60, cross multiply, divide, okay? Literally do that step every single time. You will be golden. Make sure when you're taking notes, you're on top of your desk so I know what you're doing because if I see your hands underneath the desk, writing on something, I'm assuming it's going to be something like a note or something. Don't make me assume. And if you're working on any other homework while I'm talking, I will take it and it's going to be on you. So just like we did, proportion, cross multiply, divide, simplify. Example three, last one before your exit ticket. Here, can you read it? Six is to 15 and nine is to one number. All right, so this one, whatever that folded up paper is, you can throw it away. Yeah. This one, you don't have to set up proportions because it's just dealing with fractions. What's the first fraction you see? Perez? Right, so you put 6 over 15 equals, what's the next fraction, Karma? Sorry, what? Okay, Karma wants to go with N, because for number. All right, a little bit simpler. We don't need to set up the proportion box because they gave us what they are, where we're working with already. First step, after you do your proportions, what do you do after your proportions? Every single time, what do you do after your proportions? Cedric, cross multiply. So we got 6n equals, what is the strong style of hand? 9 times 15. Let's go with Perez's hand that was up first. Oh, I know. Uh, it is nine. Uh, nine. Nine. Here we go. One hundred and thirty-five. One hundred and thirty-five. Good job. Good job. Perez, control your voice. Now, what do you do next? You just cross multiply. William, you divide. What do we divide by? Josiah? Six. Why Josiah? Because that's how many. I mean, that's 6 is to 15. No, no. 6 is N. Yes, 6 is next to N. So you want to get rid of the 6. Cross them out. 1, 1. 
Uh, please make sure that your feet are underneath your desk, that you're facing forward, just like Malik is, just like Mariana is, just like Miss Mayfield is. Please make sure you're facing forward. And Fred, your back is not against your chair, man. That's going to have to be a deduction. So now, what is what? Okay. Cool. I want you to go cool down in the back. Give me about thirty seconds in the back. Cool down. Come back and focus. Hey, Fred, I want you to focus on not using your voice in class. <sighs> All right. 135 divided by 6. 10 equals. Tyler? 22.25. I'm going to go 22 and a half. Perez, yeah. okay. you're now on a blue X. Please send on blue X. Thank you so much. Bye, Lee. Uh, Josiah? So, that's how you get the full answer? Yes, that's how you get your full answer. So if I were to reset this up, so if I were to rewrite the whole thing, it would be 6 over 15 is equal to 9 over 22 and a half. So that's saying, like, say, if this is 6 shoes for every 15 feet, if you had nine shoes, it would take up 22 and a half feet, something like that. Because remember, they go together. Karma? No. What's that? So, like, after you, what, cross multiply, then you divide that by n. Whatever is next to the number, the letter. I'm sorry. Okay, that's Let's get your whole answer. So, you just got to make sure you line everything up because if you say, if you multiply, Six by nine, you get the whole wrong answer. All right, make sure you set up. If you can say that you can confidently say, I can apply implied ratios, please raise your pencil above your head for your exit tickets.